Welcome back to the new section, Scraping Hotel Website Using Casper.js Using Casper.js to scrape Airbnb. In this video, I will help you set up a Casper.js script to scrape Airbnb.com. Then, save the data into two different files, a JSON file and an HTML file. In the JSON file, I will store the following data about each place, the name of the place, its description, the price, the number of reviews, and the length of the picture. On the HTML file, I will display the name of the place, the description, the price, the number of reviews, and also the picture of the place. Here I am on my browser using airbnb.com, and let's say that I am interested in scraping the data about the places available in Stockholm, Sweden. By the way, Stockholm is the capital of Sweden. I would like to scrape the link of the picture, the title, the place, the description, the price, and the number of reviews. The first thing to do is to locate where all this information live, to get their selectors and pass them to the script, and scrape them. I start with the picture, right-click on the picture, then select Inspect. The picture lives under this element with this class. I will do the same thing for the price. The price is in this element with this class. For the description and the reviews, I realize that I have to pick two classes to locate them. It looks like different elements are using the same classes. Let me show you. I copy the selector of the description. Then I click on the console tab. Then I use the class in the method document.querySelectorAll. I check the variable. And the first element of the result is not the right one. So one way to resolve this issue is by using the class above. I go back to the element tab, then copy the class of the element above and use it into the method document.querySelectorAll. Go and enter. And now the result is as expected. The first element is the description of the first place. So, be careful when you try to locate the data. Always be sure that you are targeting the right one, not some random elements before or after. Now, let's move to the editor to write the script. I open my editor, brackets. By the way, if you did not install Casper.js, please refer to the previous section to check the steps required to install Casper.js. I'm using the same configurations as the last section, except for few options, such as accept encoding and accept language. Those options are kind of the minimum to have a decent communication between the Airbnb server and my script. Accept encoding takes care about the data encoding, where accept language communicates the client's language, in this case, English US but feel free to select the language of your choice, it's totally fine. You can have more information about what to put in the header by visiting developer.mozilla.org, then navigate to the web HTTP headers. Here I define the global variables, the URL to scrape, then I have the title, price, descriptions, reviews, and picture. Here is the global array JSON variable to save the data into the JSON file. And of course, I am requiring the FS module to handle the files. Don't forget that my goal is to have two different files, a JSON file and an HTML file. Here is my getTitle function that returns the inner text of the elements where the titles live. And here is the getDescription function that returns descriptions and it uses two classes to locate the descriptions. The getImage returns the images links. I had to do some processing to get the links. I will explain that later. The getPrice function returns the prices. And finally, the getReviews function returns the number of reviews for each place. The createJSON function is the same function used in the previous section, where I gather the data scrape under one global variable, then pass it to the JSON file using the FS module. I'm using a createElement function to set up the HTML file. 
just a function where I pass the parent, the title of the child and its content, then add the child to the parent. In our case, the title will be the name of the place or the description and so on. Let's check the second part of the script where I am setting up the steps. The first step is to start the script with the method start. Here I pass the URL. Then I have to wait for the page to be loaded using the method wait for selector. Here I'm using this selector, but basically I could use any other selector that is loaded after all the selectors I'm requesting above are loaded. Now I start executing my functions, get title, get description, get image, get price, and finally get reviews. Here I am displaying the result on the terminal by using the method echo. This section here create a JSON file. And here I create my HTML file using this basic methods, create element, set attribute, and append child. I'm also using bootstrap, but uh, you can come up with your own way. It's totally fine, as this part has nothing to do with Casper.js. It's just a way to make the result looks a little bit fancy, but you know what? Feel free to use whatever you want. The last step here is to exit the script followed by the run method. I'm going back to the get image function to talk about how it works. Let me copy the whole function, then go to the console tab on my browser. Here I am on my console tab. I paste the function, then copy this part and use only query selector instead of query selector all to pick only the first link. Press enter. Here you can see that the style attribute has the link, but also other information that I'm not interested in. To get the link, I'm using the search method to get the position of the HTTPS and the JPEG. Let's copy this part here, then replace the E by the picture variable. Then I use the get attribute and the slice method to extract the link. Don't forget to add the number 3 to the second position, otherwise you will get the link without the JPEG. 